Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. It's a barrel proof monster showdown. Oh boy. <laughs> In all seriousness, it is exactly what we said it was going to be. It is a big barrel proof showdown of Elijah Craig barrel proof A123, Larceny barrel proof A123, and the brand new Bernheim A223. They just couldn't get it delivered in the month of January, I guess. Well, we, we all got a lot going on. <laughs> we, we're all pretty busy, and apparently Heaven Hill has been busy as well. Today, what we're going to do is go through all three of these. I wouldn't say any of these are readily available out there, but the idea is let's taste through them, let you know if they're all worth your time or not. We're going to start off with the known entity here, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And I really like this iteration of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah, the A123 is fantastic. Each time we taste it, each time we return to it, it's better and better. I got a water glass in the frame here that's <laughs> very classy. So let's do a quick tasting of this and we'll talk numbers on it and all that sort of stuff. That nose is remarkable. It is so sugary, so oaky, so bourbony. It is 12 years aged at a minimum. It makes it the oldest glass of these three. Mm -hmm. It's also the most expensive at $70. Still not a bad price for something that smells this delicious. Absolutely. And this is 125.6 proof, and I'm ready to sip on it. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, I love that kick of cherry that comes through at the end. The longer we have this bottle open, the more the cherry is showing up. It is spectacular. I liked it from the jump and I still like it. I think it's actually getting richer, mm -hmm. a little bit more flavorful. You're pulling out a little bit more. I, if I remember correctly at the very beginning, it wasn't getting a, like a cherry note or at least not a big cherry note. I like this combination right yeah, now. Yeah, Washington black cherries in there. It, it's delicious and the, it's a, becoming a vanilla bomb the longer mm -hmm. it's open. I, I'm, everybody kind of knows this already. I'm an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof fanboy. <laughs> I, I get every single batch. I think that they're all unique and they're all must-buys, mm -hmm. at least for me. And, and we collect them. I think we have the last nine or ten bottles of them. So take anything that I say about this brand with a grain of salt. But I think that at $70, that's what we're paying locally here, this is one of the still best values on the shelf among all bourbons, even though it's $70. I absolutely love it. I would have to agree with you in this instance. I always do enjoy every batch that comes out, but there's something about this one that's really hit the mark this year. Yeah, you're loving this batch. I, I am. I haven't seen you, I don't think, ever as excited about a batch. <laughs> do you want to super nerd out right now? Why wouldn't I? We're at that perfect E level that you like on Elijah Craig. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a big believer that when the bottle gets down to right at the middle of the E in Elijah, that that's when they're at their best and they're ready for drinking. That uh, is exactly where we're at right now. And it's, <laughs> it is hitting. This is such a great whiskey. The finish lasts an eternity. It is a little bit different in that it doesn't have a ton of that milk chocolate covered peanut yeah. or really any, even the raisin note that we were getting initially has mm -hmm. now become this vibrant, deep cherry rich flavor. I can't really say enough about it. I love that glass of whiskey, and that is a must-buy for me. Yeah, the flavors are just lovely. I just, I'm really enjoying it this year. Should we get a backup of this one? Do we need another Elijah Craig on the shelf? <laughs> I don't usually buy a backup of ECBP unless I know that I really like it, and I'm probably going to demolish that first bottle. This feels like that. Yeah, I... I probably would agree, because I could feel us drinking this a lot more often than we've drank any batch before. I agree. Next up is the brand new bottle, yeah. the one that just doesn't fit the mold. <laughs> it's the Bernheim Wheat Whiskey Barrel Proof A223. They just couldn't get another 123 in there. <laughs> I really hope that this doesn't become a situation of like Maker's Mark with all their Android named uh, bottles yes. where they're all, they just become numbers and letters that are... At least with everything being A123, we knew exactly when to expect it and what it was going to We'll see how they do it in the future. But Bernheim A223, yep. and this bottle here is 118.8 proof. It is 7 to 9 years age, so a little bit younger, yep. and it is $65. So price point-wise, this one lands right in the middle, and uh, I, we've only had a tiny sip of this. I'm excited about this one. I know. The only real difference in this is just a little bit less proof and a little bit less age. And a completely different mash bill. Oh, right. I forgot about that one. <laughs> this is a lot of caramel. I like the nose on this one. It smells yeah. oaky to me. 
it's very oaky, a little earthy. Um, takes me back to the farm a little bit. Yeah. Whereas coming off the ECBP, that Elijah Craig was all oak, all sugar, all fruit. This is, yeah. this smells drier. It smells. It definitely smells drier. Yeah, completely different. You ready for it? Cheers. Here we go. Oh, it tastes, I don't know why I was thinking that it would taste similar, <laughs> but it definitely doesn't. There is a dry note to it, almost yeah. like a, a honey roasted peanuts effect. A little bit, yeah. That oak does come through. To me, this is a vanilla bomb. And the longer I sit with it, the more the vanilla just hangs around on the finish. This one has a great finish to it, too. Mm. Mouthfeel, not as decadent as the ECBP. But this is an enjoyable whiskey. Like, right out of the gate, I like this whiskey a lot, much more than I expected to. If it wasn't for drinking the ECBP before this one, I probably wouldn't have anything to nitpick about it. It's just <laughs> a really enjoyable sip. The finish doesn't quite last as long. The mouthfeel mm. isn't as rich and decadent. And it, it doesn't do what ECBP does, mm -hmm. you wouldn't really expect it to. Totally different mash bill, much younger, yeah. and a first edition, basically, for this type of whiskey, for this barrel-proof whiskey. I think that coming right out of the gate, they, I don't know if I would call it a home run, but it's definitely a triple. Yeah. You like I like these baseball references? I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I really like this as well. Mm -hmm. It's hard to distinguish different flavors here. Yeah, it's very cohesive. And we yeah. know this is blended from seven to nine year barrels. It's mm -hmm. not like it's a single barrel or something right. like that. It's just well blended. I, I think it's an expertly made whiskey. I'm enjoying yeah. it very much. And by the way, the last sip that I took, it's really coating my tongue, but it is dry. It's making my mouth water. Mm. I'm enjoying this very much. It's a nice experience. I will say this, when it comes to that product, unless something changes for me mm -hmm. or I get really excited about another batch in the future based on what I hear about it, it's not like the ECBP for me. I don't see myself collecting batches of this. Right. This seems like a bottle that I'll keep it on the shelf and I will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. When it's gone, I'll buy whatever the next batch is that's available if I find another batch. Right. Um, but it's not something that I'm going to hotly like pursue as a must buy the way that every ECBP batch is. This is kind of like a keep it on the shelf. It's great, but until it proves to be a unique experience with each batch, I'll stick with just the one bottle. And for the first time out, they didn't do a bad job. No, like, uh -uh. it's it is quite delicious, and you know you only get one chance to make that first impression, <laughs> as the commercials used to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think back to trying Larceny B520 for the first time, and I didn't think that they had hit a home run with that. I thought it was good. I thought it was a solid mm -hmm. whiskey. I think that this Bernheim right out of the gate is a much better effort. It's a much better whiskey. I'm enjoying it, and that's that's about all I can say about it. I think it's definitely if you find this batch. It's it's worth it's worth your time as well. Yeah, and it's kept me intrigued enough that I would give a second look to the next one that comes out. I am a little bit curious about it, but probably not curious enough to like run out and get it. It's good though. It is good. Next up is Larceny. Historically has not been my favorite, but Scott from My Bourbon Journey really liked this one. So yeah. I and he made it sound delicious. So I'm excited to try this. He he raved about it quite honestly. Yeah. He was a raving madman. No, he was very <laughs> composed as he always is. Larceny, we have not gone after these batches because we had the B520 yeah. and the C920. We didn't really like those all too much. And then C922 was bottle of the year for breaking bourbon this past year. And so we bought it and we liked it a little more yeah. than we liked those other ones, but it wasn't our favorite. But Scott talked up this A123 so much that we decided to go for it. And this is the cheapest of the bunch. It comes in at $60. It is 125.8 proof and it's also the youngest at six to eight years aged. And there better be strawberries in this glass. He said there'd be strawberries. He kept telling me that there was gonna be strawberries in here. Scott, I can't stop her. If there's not <laughs> strawberries in here, she's coming to Wisconsin and I can't say what she's gonna do. <laughs> Onto the nose. Sugary. Yeah, Ooh. that's a good smelling nose. It almost had a little peppermint to it. This one's got a lot going on. It's got dry oak, caramel sweetness, vanilla, and there's so little fruit in there. This I is, will say, maybe he's right. I know. This is my second favorite nose of the bunch. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, my. This, I'm cheers and all around today. I'm into it. Ooh, I got a little hint of tobacco there. And a lot of vanilla. The dry oak follows through. Compared to what the nose was giving us, mm -hmm. I think that the palate here is following up nicely. A nice kick of fruit on the second sip. Mm-hmm. It's very sugary. Yeah. And a hint of that, call it a hot peanut. Mm. Um, that you get on those other bottles, it's not as intense. Right. Scott said it wasn't as intense, so yeah. Scott, we're trusting you here. <laughs> Again, 
Um, this one coats like crazy. Yeah, it's nice and thick. Mm -hmm. There's a great vanilla note in there. Yeah. Again, this is a weeded bourbon. Mm -hmm. So you've got your Elijah Craig bourbon, you've got your Bernheim wheat whiskey, mm -hmm. and then you've got the Larceny weeded bourbon. It's more intense, mm -hmm. uh, whether that comes from it being a little bit younger. Um, it's not as pleasant mm -hmm. on the tongue as the other two are, but man, does it coat. And that takes you on a ride. There's a real experience there. Every sip that I've had has tasted just a little bit different. Ooh, and now I'm getting a, a, a nice kick of cinnamon there. Yeah, there's a, that, I think that's what I'm calling intensity, mm, is there's yeah. a spicy kick on this. And it's not, in the past, some of those Larceny batches, it was not a spice kick, it was a heat kick. And they were more than a little rough around the edges. Yeah. This one is certainly a little more subtle, a little more put together, but it is still, it's, it's coming for you. That is a, Intense whiskey. It's easily the most intense whiskey on the table. Here's what I'm going to say. Okay. Not a big Larceny fan. Okay. I like this one. Yeah. I think it's missing whatever element that I don't like in the other ones. Like the other ones I think were a little bit drier, a little bit nuttier. Yeah. The, the flavor profile was just a little bit off of what I normally drink. I thought they were all perfectly delicious if I was being kind of pragmatic about drinking it. <laughs> Larceny for me continues to be a bottle that I would say if you don't scoop it up don't feel bad about it. Right. I, I don't know that I'm going to keep on buying these. Um, it's been a little bit of FOMO for me in the past. Even though the C922 was the bottle of the year for at least one outlet mm -hmm. out there and even though the A123 has been raved about to us and I think that they're good. They're not great in my opinion. They do a lot of things well, and if it's the only one of the three that you can find, I do think it's a unique experience. Yeah. But at that $60 price point, now you're talking about several other bottles that I'd probably yeah. go to first. And I, Elijah Craig, king of the heap for me, always. But it's, even in this lineup, I think it's outstanding. Yeah. Um, I think that the Larceny is a little young, and that's probably where the intensity comes from, but mm -hmm. then you're paying a little less for it, so that's all right. Bernheim right down the middle there and I think that that's where it's, it sits for me I think as a newcomer to this lineup it's a welcome addition it drinks great it drinks easy and it's super flavorful and I think that the Bernheim is going to appeal to more people than any of these other ones on the table interesting because I was going to say that the ECBP would probably appeal to a greater audience but at the same time that higher proof point might throw people off guard a bit well in the Bernheim it's easy going it's a pleasant sipper there's mm -hmm. not there's no heat even though it's a barrel proof whiskey, that heat is very tempered, very subdued. I think it's going to be a popular whiskey for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still think the ECBP is the flavor bomb of the bunch and it's it's great. And that 12 years of aging makes all the difference, but Bernheim is definitely a sleeper. I think that's a great whiskey. So we're at $70, 65 and then 60. That's right. Today. And we're not putting them in, in order of favorites, though maybe Kind of. I think I just did. Yeah, you kind of just did. Um, ECBP. Yeah. I think it's a buy. I actually would consider buying a second bottle of this if we ran low. Yeah, I think we're going to have to because I expect that we're going to run low. <laughs> so to me, and this is going to be a surprise, I liked the Larceny and I think that it's a try. You like those rough around the edge whiskeys. A little bit. I understand why you're paying the $60 price point. I'm glad it's not 70 yeah. So I'm going to say that. Like, it doesn't live up, to me, it doesn't live up to the ECBP. The first sip that I had, I was a little underwhelmed on Larceny, but the more I drank it, the more I liked it. It doesn't really hit my palate mm -hmm. all that well. I, I like the flavor profile. The finish brings a little too much heat for me. It's just, mm. it's just a little rough around the edges, and it's yeah. not what I'm looking for. And I think we swapped in our order a bit because I think you'd much rather take the Bernheim over the Larceny, and yeah. I probably wouldn't swap that. To me, this just, at $65, seems like a lot for what this is presenting to me. Yeah. I like the flavors. I do think it's cohesive. I like something that's a little bit more flamboyant. A little exotic, a yeah. little exciting. I mean, like where the flavors kind of take you in one direction or maybe they take you in the other. This one is like super mellow. And I think you're right. Like it will appeal to a broader audience. But yeah. for me in this instance, I'd rather go with something that was either on this side or that side of this lineup. <laughs> Bernheim, by the way, bringing a bit of chocolate on my last sip. And that's <laughs> quite nice. Well, there you have it. Julie, 
prefers the Larceny to the Bernheim. I prefer the Bernheim to the Larceny. <laughs> and we both prefer the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof to all of them. So with so much drama in the LVP, <laughs> it's hard doing reviews in the TBV. Oh, How about that? boy. All right. I don't know what's happening here. I guess it's just the Barrel Proof fun that we're having. Let us know what do you think of this new Bernheim if you've tried it. And from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. She's a standout. Yeah, I'm drinking more of that tonight. <laughs> I like that. <laughs>